in this video, I'm going to be talking with you about some of the foundational concepts that we do with fractions in fourth grade. So, as we all know, fractions are when you're partitioning a, a shape or a space into equal pieces, okay? So that's really important, is that they need to be equal pieces. And your fourth grader needs to be experienced and comfortable and become successful with partitioning into this many equal pieces something into two equal pieces or halves, four equal pieces or fourths, eight equal pieces or eighths, three equal pieces or thirds, six equal pieces or sixths, 12 equal pieces or twelfths, five equal pieces or fifths, and 10 equal pieces or tenths. A lot of these they did in third grade. They did halves and fourths and eighths, and I think, and thirds and sixths, but we've added on a few to fourth grade. Um, also, the reason that I chunked these together like this is because these fractions work really well together when you're noticing equivalent fractions or just when you're even partitioning. And so I'll kind of model that for you a little bit later when I do some of my visuals. Um, so that's why I chunked them together is because for me to make eighths, I actually make halves first and then fourths and then eighths and so on with these and with these. So I'll kind of model that for you so you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So, fourth graders need to be able to notice when a space is broken into equal parts and then what you do when you're joining those equal parts. So, for example, if I draw a space here and then I partition it into fourths. So, first I'm actually going to make halves and then I'm going to make fourths. And let's say I shade in three of them. Well, I can talk about this as now I'm joining each individual unit to make three-fourths. So it's actually one-fourth plus another one-fourth plus another one-fourth is three-fourths. It's a lot like saying one plus one plus one is three, but instead, since it's parts of this whole, it's one-fourth plus another one-fourth plus another one-fourth makes three-fourths. And this is just called unit fractions because it's each individual unit of the space. All right, they also need to be able to recognize partners. Just like we use add-ins when we're adding, you're kind of using number partners or add-ins when you're looking at fractions. So let me show you an example here. So let's make sixths. So I'm actually gonna make thirds first, and then I'm gonna partition that into sixths. And I'm going to talk to you about how, let's say I wanted to do five sixths. Well, I can do that in many ways. I can do one sixth plus four sixths gives me five sixths. Or I could also do two sixths plus three sixths. also gives me five sixths. And then I could keep going. I could actually say, well, the other three and two, three sixths and two sixths, or four sixths and one sixth again. But they're the same example here. But again, they need to be able to see that fractions can get put together in different ways. Here, this could be three people each eating one fourth, makes three fourths. Here, it could be someone eating one sixth and four sixths, it was five sixths eaten. So they're gonna see it in different ways where people might be using the same amount or people might be using different amounts and being able to add those together and noticing that you keep the denominator, that bottom number, the denominator the same the whole time and you're just joining the numerator, that top number. So they need to keep that in mind always. Um, another thing that they need to be able to do, like I've already done here, is being able to use the bar model. Um, and it's really the best model to use because it really shows them a good visual. And we use it further along when we're comparing and doing equivalent fractions and things like that. So the bar model is just you draw your bar and then you just partition it into the equal pieces. And I like to remind my fourth graders to start with the smallest denominator and then add on to it. So for fifths, here, I'm going to, I like to think about, well, halves and then fourths, so fifths is a little smaller. So one, two, three, so there's fifths. And then if I wanted to do tenths, fifths, tenths can come easily from fifths. So then if I just partition them, tenths, okay? So they need to be able to use the bar model to then, let's say I wanted to do three tenths, I would shade in three of the tenths. 
So keeping in mind also that relationship between numerator and denominator, if I want to do 3 tenths, well 10 is how many total pieces, and I'm shading in 3 of them. I've shaded in 3 of the 10. Okay? Um, and then they also need to be able to be familiar with the number line. So the number line is very similar. You draw your number line, and right now I'm just going to do examples of less than one or between zero and one. We will get into fractions that represent greater than one. That's our next step. But right now we're going to have zero and one. And just like you draw your whole bar first or your whole space that's going to be partitioned, you need to put your whole on the number line. Where does your whole begin and end? And then you're going to partition it just like you would here. So let's say I wanted to do eighths. Well, I like to always start with halves and then do my fourths, and then partition again, and I get eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight equal pieces. So now I can um, label them. So this is zero, so then after one eighth, that's after one hup, that's one eighth, and then another is two eighths, and then three eighths, and so on. So they need to be able, if I said put a star where five eighths is, they would need to go, okay, well, one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths. Oh, there's five eighths right there, okay? Um, the last thing I want to say about the idea of fractions really quickly is they need to notice that as my denominator gets bigger, my units are actually getting smaller because my whole only had two big pieces, but now I'm getting four smaller pieces. And now it's even smaller because I have to share it with eight smaller pieces. So noticing that fourths are going to be, a, a fourth is going to be bigger than a fifth. Because in that hole, you only need four pieces, but now you need to fit in five pieces. So noticing the relationship as the denominator changes, and that'll be important when we get in later to comparing fractions and equivalent fractions also. So keep these ideas in mind when you are working on fractions for homework or practicing at home.